The cathode building at Giga Texas is 37.1% done, and it's as big as a soccer pitch. Or $5.99 stores. A $4.96 store, if you will. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Yes, really. When you factor in the extensive site prep needed on which to build a factory and the footings, this monumentally huge mini structure is already over a third done. It may not look like it, but it doesn't have to. When you make a cake from scratch, it's 90% done by the amount of work it takes when you first pop it in the oven, and this isn't that much different. A quick thanks to upgrading Patreon members Andy D, My Charge TV, and Andy Miller, who stepped all the way up to producer. Thank you for your commitment to supporting the channel. The amount of steel on site has grown almost as much as it did in all previous weeks combined in just the last week, thanks in part to a large single-story vault area which is easier to build. And the foundation has increased based on additional areas we can count because we can safely assume they're not going to require concrete footings of their own. So before we take a look at the site map, a not-so-quick note about that. It had to be reworked completely based on emerging details about the size of each of its individual elements. Ideally, we could just use relatively uniform squares like we did for the main Giga Texas building, but there are areas that had higher density of footings, which made it kind of hard to count, and other areas where the spans across the narrow direction of the building were varied presumably depending on what they intend to install in each section, and the very specific weight ratings for each item that they're going to need, it was tricky, so we're, you know, refining it as we go. So I counted the major footings, ignoring the minor ones, and came up with 32, 33-ish squares, depending if you're counting footings or spans, the long way, and reworked it from there. I had to stick with six spans across and just cut them in half in size. They're more like rectangles. And the dimensions are doubled along the one axis, but not the other. You'll see, you'll see. This will be better dialed in over the coming weeks to get us the clearest picture possible, but considering the overall pace of construction, we may not even have time for it to even matter. I then went back through and recoded the blocks to account for how many floors each one is comprised of, and we get some fun new numbers to look at. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but this is the sort of spreadsheet I want to see, so I feel like it's what you guys deserve to get. So let's take a look at the new and improved site map and go through it as we always do a week of a week and roll it back to the beginning to see how it's changed over low these scant few weeks. The orange indicates a poured footing, with the uncolored Fs indicating ones that we believe will not be required. Gray indicates a frame is in place on all four sides, with SA, SB, and SC indicating one, two, and three floors, respectively. The footprint doesn't always match exactly each week, because this was launched with only the information available from the sky, so it's important to revise it as necessary as these weeks go by. Mad thanks to Joe Tetmeyer and Jeff Roberts for allowing use of their amazing drone footage. I would tell you to check them out, but I'm sure you already have, but in case you haven't done so recently, check them out. So here's the progress broken down by category. The site prep is at 96% done, though it's likely probably at 100%. This won't be updated until the framing covers the entire site. The footings show as 80% done, though they're likely between 90 to 95% complete. With no footing work underway, this number will continue to climb as steel is erected over each area. The steel is the first area of 100% confidence, since eyeballs are sufficient to confirm this. The 0% listed for roof and interior completion are also at 100% confidence, and I trust you'll agree, at least on those. 
So let's take a gander at the floor count tracker, where we now see a maximum footprint of 114,000 square feet, 10.6 thousand square meters, which may need to be revised downward in coming weeks. If this number is correct, we're looking at 38,000 square feet, 3.5 thousand square meters on the first floor, bigger than an average Best Buy location, 24,000 square feet on the second floor, 2.2 thousand square meters, roughly the size of an average Michael's craft store, and 18.5 thousand square feet, 1,700 square meters on the third floor, roughly the size of a Lazy Boy retail outlet. Add them all up for 81,000 square feet, 7,500 square meters, and it's bigger than a football pitch. International, not American. Though it would be significantly easier to hold a match, I guess, if it was all on a single floor, preferably without a few dozen steel columns placed at uneven intervals throughout. I don't know, man. I can't find a good source to confirm that for sure, but let me know in the comments if it would be easier to play a game of footy on a level pitch or across three floors of half-finished steel. You guys can let me know. There remains a non-zero chance that steel work can be completed in the next four weeks, which would put the interior on pace to be operational by the end of January. Tracking that deadline with math would be tricky at this point, but if that's something you guys want to see me take a stab at, let me know, and I'll see what numbers we come up with. A quick note of thanks to those of you who followed my Q2 production estimates. I got within 0.37%, marking the second time out of the six quarters I've been publishing and attempting this that I have been the most accurate of the non-Wall Street prognosticators, and the fifth time I've beat the Wall Street consensus. I only saw one channel that claimed to be closer but he didn't predict a number, he predicted a range of numbers, and Tesla's production fell outside his lower bound. That's a miss, my friend. He's pretty good with numbers, but he's far better with the marketing. Love him to death. Come on and do an interview. I've asked you every three to six months for the last year and a half. Come on, baby. So that's it. Almost a 10% jump from last week in the overall site total, with another likely jump coming next week. Do you think they can move that quickly? Will this building begin producing cathodes before the battery building in Berlin begins producing 4680s at volume? I don't know, but I'm curious to hear what you think. Videos like this take a lot of time to produce. If you find value in what you see, consider offering support on Patreon where you get early access, exclusive content, and a whole heap a lot more, including my 11-year production prediction tracker. Or just hit that subscribe, boop the bells a snoot, like it, leave a comment, you know all the things. I appreciate you all either way. You are the reason I'm able to keep going, and I thank you all for your decision to support the channel in whatever way you can. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your ideas, your juicy wisdom, your blind and brilliance in them comments below, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when we hit 50%.